we have a little trip to uh, Mount Bold and uh, Donnie's here collecting some uh, seeds of uh, a pinky, pinkish flowering uh, peltata and eventually you'll get to see uh, the actual plants that have grown from this collection of seed uh, later in one of the um, down at Donnie visits um, in, in, I think the following year you get to see the plants he's actually grown from these seeds that he's actually collected and then germinated so that would be quite a treat for you later on because <laughs> how do I put it they're almost he's almost done made them mature in about a year <laughs> it's just amazing what he what he did with them but that will be in store later on uh, I'm really just talking over this because it's a little bit boring just seeing him you know, collecting these things but then the uh, footage then goes on to show the polypod flicks at the uh, at the seep at the back there and another seep and then we go to have a look at the Mount Bold reds which are purple red uh, towards the end of the season in the bright sunlight and especially, and especially in cultivation but of course the camera just never was never any good for reds purples or um, uh, you know the, the the blues so uh, how did my dad put it the other night pretty damn useless for anything really <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean it it gave us somewhat of a record and we can check from one year to the next to see how things have changed you know so uh, and of course I can show you and you can get a little bit of a insight a, a taste I suppose of what what it what it was like and what it is like here I suppose so uh, and if you ever come to South Australia or wherever I end up yeah. eventually. Say that again, you've got feelings, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. Take a little powder. Mm. Actually, I've got these ones, they've got like pinkish colours as well. Yeah, but well, we've got to film that pink one with a pink or a kilo, isn't it? Down there. Yeah. yeah. So I reckon this one here might be this year. Yeah. And we'll go red stem from the same thing. It's going to be quite a lot faster going along, I reckon. Hey, look at this uh, part here. Look, uh, glabrous leaves. Mm -hmm. Look, look, glabrous leaves. Oh, yeah. I can't never, of course. See the outline there, mm. no problem. DSA, it's used for protection. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Basically, if the hal uh, calyx is hairy, it's peltata. If it's smooth, it's um, auriculata. So. I'll have to look at this. Are they smooth or hairy? <laughs> That's the basic definition anyway. And it becomes quite obvious when you see these more modern day macro shots, you know, JPEGs of you know, 8 megapixels of the calyx. It's, it's bloody obvious that they're either hairy or they're smooth, you know. <laughs> because it's very hard with this sort of technology, this VHS technology back then. And of course for the first over a year I, I, I didn't realise that you, you had to set it on three times to get uh, infinite focus from naught to infinity sort of thing. And the instruction book just never said that. <laughs> There's no point reading the instruction book because it, I just had to learn everything myself basically. Yeah. Basically you just buy, you know, buy this camera and throw the instruction book away because it was absolutely useless really. I mean that was the most important, the most important thing in photography of course is Bar, bar anything is focus surely you want everything to be in focus you know the colors might be out but at least you, everything's in focus but the book said nothing about that that if you wanted everything to be in focus you set the camera on um, the three setting here we go, oh, here we go. this is the pink flower one Yeah, distinct white, uh, little white band centre there. Oh, yeah. Actually, that reminds me of another little pink. Oh, very distinct. Mm. It's almost a lilac pink, you know, pink, uh, yeah, sort of pink, pink you got on. Or an indica. Yeah, obviously. Mm. Actually, they might all come off the same root stuff. They have, mm. have a look. All oh, the yeah. same part. Oh, yeah. Have a look. Yeah. That's 
to speak to any stuff at all, is it? Isn't that Now we get to the more exciting bit when we get down to see some polypomflex. This is poly, a wee polypomflex tenula or tenella. This this area here was the original site where I found um, a plant that actually had um, tentacles on the on the it had tentacles instead of petals. Uh, in this area and also it was an area where I found some really intense um, uh, ready purple witty grides one year and uh, we were going to name them after some chap in the society but uh, we did some you know a couple of transplants to see how well they went and they just went green and we thought oh well, then <laughs> they don't stay true to colour it must be uh, you know edaphic soil conditions you know it's got nothing to do with the genetics <laughs> Here we go, this is this site down here and uh, it gets quite wet and uh, they flower like they start uh, sort of pink to a light, uh, light pink to a white. Again? Okay. Okay. How many? So they flower over a six to eight week season and they start off intensely pink and by the end of the the, the season they're flowering white so uh, that's the way it goes and th that bit up there used to be used as a shooting range during uh was it between yeah. the walls i don't know i can't remember now but it was definitely yeah. used as a bit of a shooting or target practice range they used to just shoot shells into that area up there that's why it's bare <laughs> yeah i can see them on the ground here yeah, I can see them on the ground here. Yeah, here we go. Oh. Yeah, another fortnight. Okay. I'm referring to the white form then that flowers last using the last two weeks of the season or oh, well, the flowering season I should say now we look at a second seat Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll go in for a close up on the drips in a minute. And then we'll move on to the Mount Bold Reds. Which yeah. are actually purple red. <laughs> but of course the camera just doesn't pick it up. You just have to be here to see it or grow them yourself from the jimmy. They really are amazing when you put them up against the uh, Bookman Road form. They really do stand out. I mean, that's how I, Donnie showed them to me. You know, I was just absolutely gobsmacked that, you know, we've been growing these things for so many years and no one had put the two things together. And one was red, red, and the other was purple, red. It was just amazing. I still remember that day. It was almost like it was yesterday. <laughs> I believe I still have that footage somewhere, but it's on a VHS being transferred to a VHS cassette, you know, a large one. When I first started off filming, uh, I used to transfer them from the 45 little micro cassettes into, you know, a large one, because, you know, just to get rid of the clutter sort of thing. But I didn't realise you'd do so much quality in that sort of thing. Because this is all done before I learned how to have infinity focus, basically. So you know, it's pretty. Half the time is trying, spending time just trying to get the focus. Whereas when you get, when you get onto 2002, three, and four, I've already conquered that barrier, and I have no problem with focus. Of course, the two, See at the moment that just looks like red red on the camera, it just looks like the Bookman Road, Bookman Road sort of red, you know. But the camera just doesn't pick it up, it's it's a really a real purple red. Mm -hmm. And as I said before we've noticed differences now in the uh, not only is it different in colour, but it looks like there's stipple differences and looks like there's articulation differences. It looks like there's a whole clandestine diversity of, of a so-called pygmy complex spread across. And just no one's realised or taken bothered to take a look. And uh, it was only sort of this initial, you know, seeing that there was a difference between the colours. And then, of course, the uh, Hartmeyers doing their... Um, work on the on the snap uh, tentacle heads and the snap you know, tentacular ar architecture sort of thing and you know it's all come together now that we realize that you know <laughs> they're not just all big me there's some sort of complex out there and you know it'll probably have to take someone will just have to go right across from western australia all the way through to victoria onto the west coast of tasmania to, uh, to uh, solve the problem I mean, Colin Clayton has mentioned that the, the form on Kangaroo Island is different to the mainland. So, you know, you've got to give credit where credit is due, sort of thing. So, uh, but it looks like, you know, it's some really interesting work ahead of us. Because I don't know if you can see that, but the articulation there is going into the side of the, of the, um, what do you call it, the cup. Whereas Lloyd pictures it going from in from the base of the cup. So there's already a major difference between Lloyd and what you're seeing in front of you on the camera. And you can see the, the, the stipples here are quite uh, interesting. When you see other pictures of pygmia, the stipples aren't quite as prominent. So, yeah. So, th there's going to be a whole load of investigation. And as I said, I've already taken some jemmy to try and bring them back home so I can study them in more detail over a much extended period. Instead of driving up all the time, even though it's only like seven minutes away, uh, I can actually just go out the, the front door of my house and just take a look every day and see how things change. Yeah, 
Free company, okay. I mean, that's the most logical thing to do, isn't it? You know. And so I'll compare both the Bookman Road form and the Mount Bold ones uh, in my own front yard, basically. Because you can tell them apart because one's purple red and one's red red, and, and then you can just look to see all the other differences. So, yeah.